Podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> See? You agree? You know. Look at that. That's brilliant. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great. Yes. You know. So where yeah. where are we filming from today, brother? <laughs> well, we're filming from uh, where well, you can put us on the moon. Where's the Torah uh, Institute sent us this week? <laughs> the Torah Institute, where's it at? Yeah, where's it centered? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we're calling uh, we're we're here in Venice, Italy now. Oh lovely. And, the, in the background, you can see some of the bridges, uh, and you know, I don't want to say or not whether we're not whether we're on a bridge or we're on one of the gondolas mm. or the little boats. Yeah. Uh, we may have to squeeze under a bridge, so yeah. everybody keep your heads low. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and you know, in Venice, they have this amazing place called the Bridge of Sighs. And the Bridge of Size is a very short little bridge that goes over uh, like a waterway. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, on, on the left, if you're looking at it from one side, is the courthouse. And on the other side of the Bridge of Size is the jail. Ah. So they call it the Bridge of Size. <laughs> it's always been a feature of Venice that I've sort of thought that was yeah. iconic. <clears throat> mm. So anyway, what, what, what are we going to discuss today? Have you thought about anything? <laughs> Well, uh, brothers and sisters, welcome to this uh, wonderful episode of Tor Talk. I'm Mark Davidson, and I'm joined via Skype by our brother Lou White. How Hello, you, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, brother. How are you, mate? <laughs> Everything's fine. That's great. Oh, I just saw myself appear on the screen. Huh. Uh -huh. And that's interesting. I wonder why that happened. Anyway, <laughs> it's wonderful to be here with you. Yes. What do you talk about today? We we have about thirty minutes this morning. You know, okay. we're getting started a little bit late, but yeah. um, I was going to ask you since we're uh, in Europe today, uh, what uh, do you know? Where when the tribes got scattered from Babylon, do you know where exactly? Because you were talking a couple of weeks ago about uh, Los Lunos and uh, how the Israelites settled. In it was it South North Mexico? Is it? Yeah, I was interested. Do, do you know the paths that they took when they left ba ba Babel? Well, you know, there's not a written record of, of that, but there are way marks where the tribes have left their names hmm. actually, the tribal hmm. names. Like, uh, one of the most interesting ones is the tribe of Dan. Of course, there's been many expulsions from the land because of disobedience. Because uh, it, you know, twenty seven hundred thirty so year, or, or so years ago, mm -hmm. northern Israel, the ten tribes were scattered, and they went in all directions, and it took decades for them to evacuate millions of people. But mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, them going into the colonies that were already there from the days of King Shlomo and Daoud, because you mm -hmm. see, they had colonies as far away as we know in the British Isles. Scandinavia, as that, that's what we call it today. Uh, we have uh, Northern America and Southern America, like Brazil, uh, and they were mining tin and copper and gold and um, iron. Yeah. yeah, and so these are even Brazil is the Hebrew word for iron, and that's <laughs> an export from that country. And but it, not just the names of the things that I mean that's a Hebrew word, but the fact is. The tribe of Dan, which was very idolatrous, by the way, because of their mixture with the Sidonians, mm -hmm. which were in northern Israel, they would uh, leave their name, their tribal name, on 
places like the Danube River. Okay, uh, that river was named after the tribe of Dan. Evidently, they navigated up the river and down the river. Yes. And when they and Scandinavia, Scandinavia was named by Pliny because of the presence of the tribe of Dan in that area. It's called Dan. And, yeah. and London is actually London, and words like Don are actually Dan, and they uh, and London actually means abode of Dan. Uh, Denmark, or the Danes, mm. you have uh, all those things. And these are waymarks that were left by that tribe. And Hebrew words that name things like Iberia was the ancient name for, um, I believe, uh, Spain. And then the British Isles was called I Hibernia, which is the same word, Eber, the descendants of Eber. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we have all these Hebraic terms. And these tribes all came out in different times and places and went to various colonies that were already there and settled, settled in new colonies. Uh, Zebulon was uh, a tribe that, need, that literally the word means dweller by the sea. So we were talking about Israel was not a, a land empire so much as it was a sea empire. The sea empire, they, they navigated the oceans and the currents. And they call them the rivers and the oceans. They, mm. The currents were referred to in the scriptures as uh, channels of, uh, you know, mm. where they would actually know what, when they would be mm. going down the river in the in the ocean, you know. Mm. But like we would call jet streams today uh, in the atmosphere for aircraft. Yeah. But mm. they use the, the the channels in the ocean currents mm. to come and go on, you know, to mm. speed things up. They knew a lot. And they traveled in, in <clears throat> ships that were enormous. And, you know, Las Lunas, New Mexico, yeah. is a city uh, mm -hmm. that actually must mean something about the moon, Las Lunas. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we've been talking about lunar stuff. but mm. uh, Oh, we don't, I don't want to talk about lunas. No, it's not good. We don't stay on that forever. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the... City, or it wasn't a city, it was a, some sort of a colony that, mm -hmm. that was there, and they were commanded to put the commandments on the gates and on their doorposts. So, mm -hmm. one of these rocks, this huge rock that weighs mm -hmm. probably several tons, yeah. is easily found. If you look up the word Las Lunas, Las Lunas on the internet, you'll find pictures of this mm -hmm. images. Mm -hmm. But the tribes of Israel were going all over the place. And they apparently used that rock as one of the city gates or mm. the camp gate or whatever they were. They had a little camp or encampment. And uh, the reason that they were there is probably because sea level was much higher, say, 25, 2700 years ago than really? it was today. So mm. they were able to get deep water ships up what we call the Rio Grande. Mm. Probably they went right over Florida. Because if it was several meters up, see, Florida is uh, not very, uh, just a few meters high. Mm. You know, the this, this, mm. this state called Florida. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not even there, you know. Why, um, why, what caused the oceans to come down? Because everyone's saying with the global global warming, it's going to go up. Mm. Why, why is it coming down? Well, it, it, it fluctuates. Uh, if you were to look, go to the Internet and look for sea level, historic sea levels, mm. you would find that there's evidences from things that are underwater right now that sea level was radically lower, mm. maybe 45 feet lower than it is today. Wow. And uh, as much as 30 to 40 feet higher than it is today mm. over different mm. periods of time. Mm. Now, what causes that may have been... Uh, of course, uh, aliens. No, no, <laughs> aliens. It was yeah. probably caused by uh, yeah. people who were uh, smoking cigarettes and cigars, <laughs> causing you know, atmosphere to warm up. That's right. But I heard it was cows. It's, it's solar fluctuations. Yeah. Uh, the sun. The sun is a dynamic <coughs> thing, and as uh, flare activity occurs, and also uh, just. The size of the sun, it, it'll expand and contract just a little bit because of conditions that are going on in the mm -hmm. core. Mm -hmm. And those are the things. It's the sun, of course. Yeah. It isn't 
you know, and it could be also, it could be volcanoes uh, that occurred because volcanoes can cause cooling, mm. which will cause the ice caps to increase in size, mm. thus lowering so sea level. And of mm. course, as things warm up with uh, less volcanic activity, the, you know, the uh, oceans would expand as the, mm. as the two polar caps would melt, mm. so there would be more uh, water. Mm. It, it's really mm. just a natural occurrence, mm. but what mankind actually puts out is less than 1% of what mm. it, the vol one volcano would put out, you know. Yeah. It would take mm. us uh, over, uh, <clears throat> you know, decades to, to put out just one, one volcano. And there's, there's several volcanoes erupting mm. at all times on the Earth, mm. you know. Wow. I think you're wrong. I think it's all just about the moon. <laughs> really? The, yeah, moon, probably, the moon's causing it. The moon, we've all and, been, and you know what's, what that's causing is, is cancer. Okay. Uh, everything yeah. causes cancer. Yeah. You know. It's all about it's, the moon. We've all been wrong about the moon. The moon's the answer to everything. <laughs> and ultimately, it causes cancer. Where have we but, been? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, actually, who's in control? Throw, yeah. the, throw the tour in the bin and just look at the moon. <laughs> there was a gentleman a few decades ago, maybe not quite two decades ago, that was actually theorizing that the moon was causing most all our problems. Yeah. And we needed to blow it up. Yeah. And it needed to just get out of it. <laughs> Going to nuke the moon. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to blow this thing up. Right I don't ahead. think that's possible, is it? It's pretty, it's huge, well, isn't yeah. It? Uh, it's possible? But you see, it's not going to happen because uh. you didn't say that was going to happen. So, no. But it, it's important that as we go through our little dance with the moon around the orbit of the sun, mm. that little fluctuation in and out, that, because see, we're at a perfect distance from the sun. That would affect and us. If we, if we, yes, it would. The temperature, Yahuwah has uh, allowed the moon to use uh, it to cause the earth to come in and sway in and sway out and we so we get into that yeah. we get closer to the sun a little bit and then we get further out <clears> and further in. and mm. it, it all factors in there's <laughs> there's an amazing design to this mm. wow yeah. and uh we, we've gone yeah. there again we've done it again we're still talking about the moon <laughs> there you go and it's it's, the, it's powerful <laughs> it is, yeah. It's well, fun. we were talking about the Danube River. You have to remember <laughs> that. Right. But it's, it's a beautiful city we're in. We, have, we should talk about some of these uh, things that we see here. Sea level is very important yeah. to people that live in the city of Venice. Yes. In fact, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. they've been uh, noticing that yeah. uh, in old paintings, just during the Middle Ages, 16, 15, 1600s, yeah. and 1700s, the uh, students all over Europe would go to Venice to study art, and they made a lot of paintings of different places that are still here in Venice. And the buildings, you can see where the sea level is on the buildings, and the same buildings are here today, and you can see how the, the sea level has raised several feet. And it's continuing to just inch up, inch up, inch up. Because, you know, Al Gore is smoking extra cigars, See. And it's caught, and, and and these people that are buying these corporate jets, they're burning all this fossil fuel. Yeah. But actually, you know what that does? The carbon dioxide that comes out of a cigar, or a jet, or a car, actually gives food for the plant life, which hurriedly consumes it and makes wood, because you see, the uh -huh. wood is what it's, the carbon dioxide turns into, and after it takes the carbon out and makes wood, then it gives you the oxygen as a byproduct. Mm. So if the more carbon dioxide that we can make, it's not even the principal global warming thing anyway. Mm. It's water vapor, water vapor yeah. the thing yeah. that causes global warming by far yeah. more. But uh, if you wanted to eke out a little bit more carbon dioxide, then you'd get more oxygen and more wood. Uh -huh. Because the plants use it as, uh -huh. it, it eats it like candy, you know. So the electric car is not our savior. Our car is no. Our it's, we're going to get off the ground with uh, windmills and uh, solar <laughs> panels. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like that's going to happen. Yeah. Well, we've got this geothermal uh, thing hooked up as a booster, and we're going to use that solar panel 
and get that windmill over there, and we're going to launch this 500 passenger jet. <laughs> yeah. To the moon. Yeah. That's not going to work. No. Anyway. Wow. Uh, anyway, all of those things need to be used, of course. Uh, we should use solar energy, which is uh, stored in batteries, and we should use all those energy sources, geothermal. You know, back in the day, uh, <clears throat> a few years ago, palaces were actually cooled in these warm climates by means of geothermal cooling. They would have large pipes underground, you know, say 10 or 12 inches in diameter, mm. and they would go for hundreds of feet in all directions, and they would... They would slope, I, don't know, I think they would slope down slightly, and they would have vents on the outside to take air in. So the heated air would, would move out, and mm. this cool air mm. from several feet underground would, would cool the air. And by the time it would go into the palaces, it would, um, it would draw in air, and then it, I don't know how it really worked exactly. It used yeah. it used the gravity and the, the <laughs> rising of hot and heated air. Wow. But, they, but palaces were cool to like wow. 70 degrees when it would be 100 degrees outside. Wow. You know, wow. we could still do that, you know, yeah. geothermal. Yeah. And it would also help in the winter too. Yeah. So, um, way marks. Um, do you know of any other, do you know of any other way marks that might have, uh, you know, say for instance, uh, how did the Aborigines get down here? Or uh, how did, uh, well, we're, Red Indians, or how did they? They all just came down in boats everywhere, did they? Mostly, yes, mm -hmm. boats. Uh, because you see, Israel was a sea empire, more by by far more than a land empire. Most people don't know that, do they? No, they don't. They're thinking hmm. empire, and they're instantly thinking, "Well, this is the land that they occupied." Where's the but castle? But that's not. True. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, Persia. Uh, they think of uh, Egypt, and then they also think of uh, Greece. And Rome, and these are well the four beasts basically, and mm. you've got uh, Babylon, you know, uh, and and the empire is measured in terms of its area mm. on the land. Wow. But when Israel was engaged in mm. its heyday, when mm. they were keeping Torah, mm. yeah, uh, particularly yeah. under Daud and Shlomo, mm. and then subsequently. Uh, you know, uh, they didn't stay in the land that long, really, because they were so disobedient, because there were so many air, uh, pagans around. But they, they would send out ships, and it's mm. in the scriptures, that's, and they talk about the ships that they were sending out, and that they would come back, and it would take them a cycle of sometimes three years mm. to come back with, you know, because they had settlements. And they didn't just have the crew on board ship doing the work. They were launching people, and the people were actually setting themselves up permanently in these colonies. Mm. They were there to stay. Yeah. And, of course, the, some of them were Torah observant, and some of them were keeping uh, the Sidonian religion of sun worship. And mm. That's where the Christmas tree <laughs> comes from and all that, you know. Yeah. So we have both of those types of people on the boat, and some of them were Sidonians, but they were influencing the Israelites, too, with their error, yeah. you know. Because people go right to error. That's the first thing they go for. Yeah. And, yeah, funny. it's our nature. It's funny about that. <laughs> yeah, they go yeah. for the weirdest thing first, mm. and then they go, well, you know, this makes sense. And because it makes sense, okay. it must be true. It's almost like there's some dark entity behind it. You know, hush, well, hush, well, hush my mouth. <laughs> yes. yeah. It is like something that <clears throat> we're also fallen, and we have a darkened spirit ourselves. Yes. So, mm. And we're selfish, mm. and we want quick mm. self-gratification yes. and we now and we're just like a baby yeah. we're uh, we, we, we can't tolerate other people having their way uh, mm. so it's yeah. just our nature you know yeah. we that's one of the things we have to overcome first yeah you know but so, the uh, but the fact is the way marks are there there's so many places that are named after Hebrew words Hawaii yeah. is an example too the Polynesians those are Israelites. Yeah. The Native Americans, as we understand them, are Israelites. Mm. And they, uh, in, in, well, like for example, in Hawaii, the Hawaiian language itself, you've got a word, kahuna, you know, you've heard yeah. of the big kahuna. Big well, kahuna. Right now, <laughs> yeah. Well, that means high priest. And, of course, right now it's mixed with, uh, 
you know, paganism. The high and priest, the high priest was the big Kahuna, was he? Yes, he was. And still is. <laughs> we have one big Kahuna. Big Kahuna, I like that. <laughs> yeah, but Yahusha's our big Kahuna. And it comes from the word Kohen. Ko which oh, means priest. Priest? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you already know that? I I I knew it was Kohan Adol or something, is it? Kohan Yeah. I just didn't know which word was which. Yeah, yeah they're Kohen Hakadol. Uh, that yeah. means big kahuna. Big Godol. kahuna. Yeah, serves yeah. up. Fantastic. Godol means large, big, yeah. or great. You mm. know. Wonderful. Godol. Fantastic, yeah. Mm. So. It's like there's an energy trying to escape through the crack behind you. <laughs> Look behind you. There's, there's oh, a, is there a crack in space? There's a, yeah, there's a. It's trying to seep out. The light's trying to. <laughs> it's like. Oh, you uh, you how bright the sun is right behind me, though. Yeah. Behind this official <clears throat> dimension right now, yeah. there's a reality that is really blazing. It's been, <laughs> it's been there in all the uh, late, the, 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 la the first uh, three episodes. Yeah, it has. Mm. It, yeah. And now that's better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just shoved the little panel here. Yeah. yeah. That's the artificial world that we're in. Yeah. <laughs> the artificial world. Is yeah. that better? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to do that. That's great. I just uh, showed it. It's just, I've got to just uh, butt it up against the side, you know, mm. and I just pushed it a little and it closed off the light. The light is really bright back here. Let me check it out. I'm going to peek, poke my head through the interdimensional void. <laughs> oh, boy. That's bright. Yeah, your face is shining. We can't look at you. <laughs> oh, it was before, you know, yeah. last few weeks. Yeah. 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 Well, here we are uh, on a video, and this is uh, also going to be audio, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yes. <sighs> well, uh, so what are we talking about? Uh, yeah, the we're colonies. We're talking about Wayne. Do you know anything about Aborigines, or are we just too far away down here? You know, that's something I don't know about, and I don't know that they kept a good record of it either, did they? The Scottish people did. Yeah. The Scottish people, in their, they have a little constitution, and they actually say uh, in the constitution that it was so many years uh, they, that they wandered since the, since the scattering, and they know mm. they're Israelites, mm. the Scottish people. In fact, the word Scotland actually comes from the Hebrew word scooth, mm. which means scattered ones. Because, but actually the, the concept is a figurative because the literal, instead of the figurative, mm. of the word skuth is based on the Hebrew word sukoth, which means tents. So tent dwellers are scattered people, mm. people that don't have a permanent place. And mm. that's why they know who they are. And, they, mm. and they're very, uh, I think, I, I have a great amount of respect for the Scottish yeah. And the, the kilts, the, would that be kind of like when, uh, you know, they have different kilts for different families, different colors, and you were saying yeah. something like that in an article, weren't you, where the different kilts, like when uh, Jacob gave his son the the coat of many colors, or? Yes, yes. That, so we that. have, y Yosef was split into two tribes, Menasha and Ephraim, Ephraim, or Ephraim, and those memories of their father, Yosef, it trickled down into the families that came and descended from those two tribes. And, of mm. course, they would remember the, the coat of many colors. Mm. And the, the more colors these families have in their kilts or their, their family colors, they, uh, the higher the ranking it, oh. they regard a, a family with more color, more lines, yeah. as being a higher rank. Mm. So it's interesting that uh, maybe... The Israelites, maybe, you know, it's possible that Yaakov, or the one they call Jacob, mm -hmm. uh, when he gave Yosef this coat, perhaps they had a, a, a pattern that the family had already, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, maybe two stripes or three stripes, and maybe mm -hmm. Yosef had a whole bunch of stripes, and that really offended um, the uh, other brothers, you know, because that, mm -hmm. made, that lifted him up higher in the eyes of their father, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I don't know this. This is just conjecture. But mm. you know, the thing the fact is this is a pattern that's been carried on mm. into the Scottish people. Yeah. It's interesting. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you go. go ahead. Oh. <laughs> well I was gonna, I was just gonna mention that uh, when they came out of 
the period of the drought when it, in the days of Elijah or mm -hmm. Eliyahu, mm -hmm. when he was, you know, three and a half years of no rain in northern Israel, the people that lived there were under the king Ahab and his pagan wife uh, Jezebel, as they Jezebel, yeah. and the persecution that was happening to, you know, the Israelites in their true faith, and the fact that uh, she was, the wife, Jezebel, or Jezebel, was promoting B-A-A-L worship and the mm -hmm. worship of the A-S-H-E-R-A-H tree and yeah. the consort of B-A-A-L. Yeah. Well, and the priests that she was supporting, and uh, the people were fleeing. Uh, the Assyrians were over there pounding them, you know, yeah. uh, attacking them. And growing stronger and stronger and stronger, the Assyrians were the Ninevites. You yeah. know, the, the Nineveh was the capital, yeah. which means fish. Nineveh means fish, or city of fish. It's interesting. Anyway, they were worshippers of fish, yeah. <laughs> which is where the Dagon, the D A G O N hat comes from. Yes. The and the Philistines had the same problem with fish worship. Yes. And the temple, like Shem Shem was. Uh, you know, and the ark was taken in, and yeah. the statue fell down. But anyway, back to Jezebel's time and the days of Eliyahu, when the drought was happening, the people were leaving because they were saying, we can't drink anything, we can't grow food, there's a drought, we're going to have to leave. So their families were slowly getting on boats or traveling in carts and wagons and just moving away. Yeah. And the city of Carthage, what they call Kirjath, Kadasha was the original name of that. Carthage was uh, named actually uh, by, uh, well, it's it's a more of a Latinization of the original word, Kurjaf Hakadasha. It means new city. That's what the word mean, means. Oh, Kadasha's, Kadasha's new, is it? Yeah, Kur, yeah, Kadasha means new, and, Kur, and Kurjaf means city. So you've got, uh, well, Ur means city too, but anyway, the, in northern Africa, right around the middle of the uh, northern Africa there, is this colony. And it, mm -hmm. during the days of Eliyahu, that colony was an Israelite colony, and it swelled to over one million people during the days of Eliyahu. And that was just one of the colonies. And then there were other colonies, you know, like Tarshish, and yeah. many other colonies that swelled with these basically exiles from northern Israel. Wow. And so, you know, the scattering was pressure that was being exerted by the Creator. Yahuwah was causing them to want to leave. You know, they actually mm -hmm. desired, highly desired to leave, because there was no reason to stay. So there was the a, land vomiting them out. Yeah, yeah. So there was uh, there was exiles, little exiles happening right even before they were officially invaded, and by the Assyrians yeah. and the Babylonians. The Assyrians. And that was actually yes, the Assyrians and Babylonians both. Which which uh, different times. Which ones took which? The Assyrians took the northern tribes, didn't Right. The southern tribes, northern tribes. They only got about 14,000 people, though, but they killed a lot of people, too. But the ones that uh, were that left were the ones that were saved, the ones that were actually exiled. They were put into the nations, like Amos 9, verse 9, mm -hmm. is a prophet who was inspired by Yahuwah to explain that the scattering of the people of Israel was intentional. Mm -hmm. And in, in order to get them into the <clears throat> nations, to become the nations, literally, yeah. and that's why the name Abraham or Abraham is so interesting because it means father of nations. So these mm -hmm. tribes became the nations, and that's who we're reaching right now. Mm -hmm. Lost prodigal sons yeah. and daughters, mm -hmm. and they're out there, and they, and they have to respond to... Yeah. The Besora or the message yeah. of who they are, their identity mm. as lost Israelites, yeah. and they don't maybe know who, which tribe they're of. They're probably a fusion of many tribes over yeah. the generations. Everything's been recombined, mm. and now we're responding because we're, we're coming to our senses <clears throat> yeah. and realizing that uh, we're being called back to the covenant, mm. not the land. The land no. is. Not what we're being called back to, mm. but to the covenant. Because yeah. in Deuteronomy chapter four, and I think it's Deuteronomy thirty, mm. it's we're being when these words come upon us in the last days, mm. where he has scattered us, then we would return to him, not return to the land. He's going to return us to the land. That's a trap, because isn't it? It's a trap, 
a lot of people miss the subtlety of that. that uh, the she's going to return to the land. Mm. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? Amazing. Amazing. So the, the scattering's been happening for thousands of years. It has. Um, so it's really hard to... Remember we said it was around about 2730 years since 722 BCE, and so that was around about... 2008, people are starting to wake up, and that's why. Right. But it's really hard to put a date on it, isn't it? Because even before that, the nations are being scattered. Yes. The southern tribes were scattered at a different time uh, mm -hmm. to the northern tribes. So it's really a case of you can't, you know. You, you can't, can't really know a date wise because yeah. they, were, they were leaving in different times and layers yeah. and waves, and they. You know, but the entire thing mm. is really hard to put a date on. Mm. But as far as our opportunity for the the curse to end, yeah, uh, two thousand eight is a kind of a fuzzy period of time when mm. those of us that have come to the knowledge of the truth and mm. understand that we need to get back into the covenant mm. and, re and 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 enjoin to the covenant and become re-engrafted into the tree of Israel mm -hmm. and become Israelites and obe obeying the commandments of Yahuwah and holding to the testimony of Yahushua, both yes. of those things, and yes. forsaking the circus fathers. Yes. You know, I mean, praying that that, that that deception doesn't take hold, nor falling for the Kabbalah of mm -hmm. rabbinical theism. Yes. But um, <clears throat> then we can say, well, not to be hateful to either one, but to bring everything together again with the guidance of Yahushua's leading, and then we can become uh, a family again, you know, yeah. a, a yeah. huge uh, one unity, you know, uh, we can all be on the same page with the Sabbath, the yeah. weekly Sabbath, and then the annual festivals, and we can understand the moon, and, you know, there it goes. Oh, the moon. Oh, boy, don't break it down. Oh, no. It's a, <laughs> oh, we have to start a new moon following. I'm sure it'll take quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people don't know. See, we never got told anything. In Christianity and in most religion, the whole theme of Scripture seems to be the restoration of Yahuwah's people, the two tribes coming back together. Well, first the, firstly, them scattering and why they scattered. Hopefully we'll learn from it. And then him bringing them back together. We never told anything about that, and that seems no, to, that's the whole theme. Well, there's a lot of bigger themes, but that's the whole theme of of scripture, and we're not told about that. You know, it's, well, I, um, I was uh, Adam and Kawah thrown out of the garden, yeah, because they did not obey. Why yeah. was Israel thrown out of the land over and over because they mm. did not obey? Mm. And when we understand that we, hey, we've got to obey, and we've got these teachers that are telling us. You can't obey. No. You know, it's give not me the possible. book, the, the book chapter and verse on that. Mm. You know, we, we desire to obey because he has inscribed his Torah on our hearts, where he said he would. Okay, these laws will be on your heart, in your heart, mm. and in your mind. Yeah. And he searches minds and hearts, <clears throat> see if there's any that mm. understand. And mm. there's a few. And he said, you know, when I return, will I find the faith on the earth? Yeah. And that's a, I, I certainly hope he does. You know, mm. if he finds the fruit, if he, if we see the fruit, we know that that, that the people are in the in the faith. Yeah. You know, they're on the same page as far as uh, mm. you know, loving each other, loving Yahuwah first, and loving each other, and yeah. um, and not get into the, not try to split hairs and try yeah. to get into arguments about what the difference is between a nook and a cranny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's not let's go over that and forget that. That's <clears throat> yeah. No, that's that, that's what Charlie was talking. About. I'm always getting sucked into those. They happen on the YouTube and people, particularly this moon one. Oh, I get stung all the time. People come up and I sent you a couple of things. I said I don't know what this one means, brother. It's just insane. And I type it in and they oh, but blah blah blah. Oh, blah blah blah. Oh, blah blah blah. And then I go and do a client and I come back and I look at this page full of stuff and I go, oh, what was all that? And I just delete it all, get lost, you know. Yeah, like, it's, it's, just, yeah. it's just so distracting. It's like it's like Yahushua's sitting there on the mountain, beautiful mountain, talking to his emissaries, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like a, 
you know, a mustard seed, some n nut job comes along and says, oh, look at the moon, you know, and oh, that's great, brother, come on in. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed and, you know, oh, look at the moon, you know, like, yeah, that's great, but, you know, the kingdom yeah, of heaven, kingdom of heaven, yeah, moon, <laughs> one <day. laughs> Moon. <laughs> You've got it all wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. it's over here, yeah. up there, moon. You know, like, yeah. like you got it wrong, master. <laughs> it's up there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like so distracting. I'm I'm learning a lot from this. It's like... Um, well, I've been dealing with this, Mark, with oh, this moon for, yeah. um, I guess, at least heavily, maybe eight years. And oh I don't, goodness. I try to run away from it, just like we're trying to avoid it in our conversation now. I've but had I eight don't, days and I'm going nuts. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't get sucked into it. No. Just don't get, just say, well, uh, you know, that one gentleman said three scriptures. He says, look at these scriptures. Isn't it a coincidence that this happened on the first day of the moon in all three cases? And they're not resting, you know, they're just, well, he's mentioning that. The, the fact that it was this time of the month, that's all. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't it was proving anything. They're reading the stuff <laughs> into the text that they want to see. That's yeah. the eisegesis thing. Yeah. You can't do it. We're talking about the moon again, brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh. <Sorry. laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's out oh. of it. It'll be out of our system soon. <laughs> oh, hopefully. The yeah. scattering of the tribes of Israel, though, <laughs> is uh, we're reaching yeah. them, a few of them, right now, yeah. and just telling them, we don't have all the information. Yeah. We don't have to prove anything. All we have mm. to do is know that there's a restoration process. It's mm. all through Scripture. And who's restoring us? It isn't by personal effort. It's no. getting aligned with the Torah once yeah. again. Learning how to love the commandments, you know. Mm. If you can learn how to love the commandments, you need him because mm. he's the only one to allow that. Yeah. Because otherwise, that he's well. It's, there's worse things than, than not loving the commandments. There's, you know, but uh, you know, unbelief, complete unbelief. Yeah. There's people that that believe, but they don't obey, which yeah. is going to get them in trouble. Yeah. Just, uh, but uh, if they can just believe and then say, well, take the next step, allow him to cause you to love the commandments. Yeah. Because when you look at a brother and sister who's not judging you, but they they'll tell you that I love the commandments and I love him first. That's why I obey his commandments. Yeah. Then they understand that you're not trying to seek your salvation by obe obedience, mm -hmm. but you're, you're seeking deliverance from sin and you're not going to be delivered from sin if you think you don't have to obey. No. You know, So you need him to guide you and to come into you, like you were saying, possess you, mm -hmm. so that you see out through your eyes, but you see with his mind, and everything that you see in the world is not reinvented. But if you see the witchcraft, you mm -hmm. say, well, wait a minute. What's that Christmas tree? You yeah. know, that's kind of where it started for me. Because yeah. my son was a little boy, three, four years old. And he said, yeah. Dad, what is that? And I said, I don't know. I've seen it all my life. But I want to find out. And I found out. Yeah. And it happens to be a pagan idol, an altar. Mm. A-S-H-E-R-A-H. Yeah. Anybody that wants to Google the word A S H E R A H Christmas tree mm. will find a, a lot of information about this. That they're connected. You know, mm. and what the ornaments mean. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's a lot of things that people don't know and they need to have the scales fall from their eyes so that they can mm. see things and they look to our creator rather than yeah. how they look to us. Because mm. how things look to us is not important at all. No. We need to align our, our, our thoughts and our will, <clears throat> and renew our minds mm -hmm. according to what he sees and what his desire is, not ours, ours because he doesn't do our desire. We do his desires. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what is Wonderful. most important. Yeah. That's anyway, it's a little bit over time now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get scooting. Yeah, sure. You sure. Know. Wonderful. Would you, um, so this isn't, uh, is it just today, or this this time isn't? Uh, I this time, this time is great if we can keep it to around thirty minutes. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Sure. Just yeah. a couple of weeks ago, you said that you didn't have to work for a few hours. So I thought, oh, well, this might be better for you. You can sleep in. 
Well, yeah, but you see, our schedules change. Oh, and this, okay. this week, I can't, but okay. uh, I have to get moving. All right. Um, sure. So. Great. I'll see what I can come up with with the uh, location, location. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I imagine there might be some really nice video available on Venice. Yeah. You know. I like your funky shirt. That's nice. This is awesome. I'm going to wear this to work. I'm going to go out into the world today, yeah. and I'm going to be showing this shirt to everyone. This is embroidered, mm. you know, and we're going to be, uh, in fact, we actually sell these. This is a long sleeve, long sleeve. Uh, sort of a polo thing, mm. you know. Yeah. It buttons up, you know. Mm. You can do this. Yeah. 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 You know, it's very nice. Look, very nice. Look here. It's all heavy for the summer. It's, yeah. it's not summer down there, is it? No, it's but, still win still very much winter. Yes, yes. yes. So yeah. it's uh, we're in the hottest time of our year basically here, but you're in the coldest part probably. Yes. Yeah. But uh, this these waterways around us are they're very uh, mm. they're very pleasant because it's that Mediterranean climate. Yeah. You know, it's a good thing we're doing it here instead of down there or up yeah. here. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank, you, thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. It's been another wonderful adventure. We never know where we're going with Yahusha. So, well, ultimately we know. But, uh, yeah. Love you, brother. We, all, we love all of you and yes. pray for you. Yes. Yes. We'll see you next time. Wonderful, mate. You have a good week, eh? Okay. Uh, I'll see you next week, uh, 8 o'clock, right? Yes. My time? 8 o'clock your be. time. I know it's really late for you, so, you yeah. know. That's all right. I got to have some dinner this time. It's great. <laughs> oh, that's great. I had yeah. breakfast. I had breakfast before. Yeah. Last week, uh, Phyllis fixed me, uh, remember, what, what what was it? Uh, strawberry some pancakes. Kind of <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> strawberry pancakes. They were delicious. Yeah. Well, we'll see you next time, and uh, we love you. Yep. And yep. we'll see you then. Wonderful. Love you too, mate. Bye-bye now. See you later. Oh